Don launched his new brasserie, Jordan's, in East Village in the Olympic Park. He had warm reviews from food journalists and managed some business in the late summer. Then, with lockdowns, loans and staff on furlough, he had no option but to sit it out. He calculated that the overheads of trying to run a takeaway service were too high. So he closed his doors and pondered his survival strategy. Don hadn't come from money, so he knew it didn't grow on trees. A flash hit him, went out in the Olympic Park, walking dogs. He never liked them, but with the lockdown dog fad, he had a new market right on his doorstep. The bills weren't going to pay themselves, and this was all cash in hand. It was cheap to have some leaflets made up, and once he put an oak tree leaf with an acorn on the postcard, it looked sufficiently middle class to attract a premium rate. At 20 pounds per hour and five dogs at a time, cleaning up their poo was something he got used to rapidly. Cocker Spaniels, Golden Retrievers, Poodles, Beagles and a Jack Russell Yorkie Cross were some of the mutts that lined his pockets. Their owners had spent thousands on these creatures, which Don just could not fathom. Hmm, maybe dog breeding was his next step. On a cold February afternoon in the Olympic Park, as he crossed the footbridge above the Velo Park, a black Labrador took a shine to one of his dogs. The owner at the end of the leash was a pretty brunette in her early 40s with her hair tied back. If only human interactions were this simple, he said with a smile. So you be sniffing my bum unsolicited? Looking at him poo-faced. Don wasn't sure how to react. Was she being serious? Or would he find that she was kidding? Yeah, probably. He smirked, taking a big chance. Cheeky bugger. She chortled. You must like dogs then. I figure with five dogs I can't possibly go wrong with the ladies. Growing more confident with his banter. I'm walking down to Hackney Marshes to give these guys a run around. You'd be welcome to join us. Her nose wrinkled slightly as she looked at her watch. Got an annoying work Zoom meeting in 15 minutes, she sighed. Why don't you call me later and we can take a walk sometime this week, handing him a business card. Clara Evans, chartered surveyor, holding the card up and putting it in his pocket. A good outcome for this walking session indeed. I can assure you my foundations aren't very deep. He shook his head at her. I'm Don, and these are a bunch of dogs I've been walking this morning for people too lazy to do it themselves. I'll talk to you later. And she waved and turned towards East Village. This was certainly a turn for the better. Don hadn't been too successful on the romance front since his brasserie took over his life. With the aftermath of closing up his dream venue, the preoccupation of making ends meet and not missing mortgage payments on the apartment he had only bought 18 months before, there were no ladies in the picture. In spite of closure, he was working on his spring reopening plans and dreaming up menus that would get the punters in. He felt the business card in his pocket with his hand. He got further into Hackney Marshes to be far enough away from other people to safely let the dogs off their leads. He carried a couple of tennis balls. These dumb creatures would chase after them all day given the chance. Two burly looking men approached. One of them was holding a picture as he came nearer to Don. Hey mate, he said in a strong Eastern European accent. Have you seen this dog? There's a picture of a black Labrador. Well, I... And from nowhere, he felt a blow to the back of his head. And then, everything went black. Sir, you've had a head injury and we're taking you to a hospital. A paramedic with a mask informed him, patting him on the shoulder. Don was weak and confused, his head throbbing. What happened? Where are the dogs? I need to get them back. Mr. Jordan, you were assaulted and robbed. Some witnesses who called for us saw you being struck by a man. 
while another made off with your dogs. They aren't my dogs. Their owners pay me to walk them, Don groaned. At the hospital, he was taken to get an x-ray. One of the nurses had been decent enough to feel the phone calls and messages that were coming through from concerned owners who were calmly informed their dog had been stolen and police would be in touch. Don had no idea if they were insured or would ever see the dogs again. After the x-ray he was lying down on, in a bed with the curtain closed. So he decided to pick up his phone. He fished in his pocket for the card and sent a message to Clara. Good heavens, what a way to end up just after I spoke to you, she said, stroking his arm. The doctor says I can drive you home after they've discharged you tomorrow. My mom taught me not to take rides with strangers, he quipped. Well, I can assure you I don't even have any sweets, <laughs> giggling. The police interviewed me. Not a lot or I can really say by way of identifying the thieves. How many big Polish or Bulgarian guys are there in London? Don said, sighing. Those were all thoroughbred dogs and pretty valuable, I imagine Clara said. Hell knows how I go from here. That's dog walking finished if I'm the guy who loses the expensive ones. That was my only way of making it through lockdown, with my frickin' brasserie shut down. He had tears in his eyes and quickly wiped them away. He didn't want her to see him like this, but he couldn't help it. I'll cook us dinner, Don, and we can figure it out between us tomorrow. I'll consider us in a bubble now. Her smile cut through the pain, and he put his head back on the pillow.